Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, August 31st at midnight, 2019. The coronal hole you're looking at has uh, just coupled with us in the last 24 hours, and it's creating some geomagnetic instability. Yeah, we're at KP4, and that may go up. Not only that, the models have changed for Hurricane Dorian, which is Cat 4. It's going to hover between Cat 4 and Cat 3 as it makes its way towards the Bahamas here in Marsh Harbor. I'll tell you what, I would not want to be in Marsh Harbor on Monday afternoon. We'll get to the models, and it's looking better and better for you all in the peninsula. But we'll get to that. Keep calm. It's boom time. Hurricane Dorian strengthens to a Cat 4 storm, according to the National Hurricane Center, says... Survey says, West Palm Beach, Florida, Hurricane Dorian became an extremely dangerous Cat 4 storm Friday, according to the National Hurricane Center. The center's latest alert is based on reports from the Hurricane Hunter aircraft flown by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. You know those frauds. We'll get to them later. Now, hashtag Dorian has strengthened to Cat 4, an extremely dangerous hurricane, but it may not hit land at all. And the current models show it barely hitting Daytona Beach and maybe Wilmington, North Carolina. But we're going to get to the models. Dorian currently has maximum sustained winds of 130 miles per hour. The storm status means it's considered a major hurricane on the Saffir Simpson wind scale. And well, let's just get to the models. Here is the current warning coming from the Hurricane Warning Center. You can see it's not going through Florida at all. In fact, it's going to reach this. Harbor Marsh area in the Bahamas, and it's going to stall here for two days, Monday through your Tuesday, which will be your lose day as it moves its way up to the coast towards Georgia. Maximum sustained winds now at 140 miles per hour at the 11 p.m. advisory, Friday, August 30th. This is a severe hurricane, and if you're on the coast, it's not going to be uh, easy, to say the least, especially in Daytona. This may rafe the coast. The models can change. Now, here's the problem. All the models concur all the way up to this point. For the last four days, the models are all the same to Marsh Harbor. So this will happen on Monday morning in Marsh Harbor. What happens after here is anyone's guess, but it's looking like it's going to rafe the coast up here, Palm Bay, Daytona, Jacksonville, Savannah, and make its way all the way up to Nova Scotia. Let's watch the... European model here, as I just discussed. So Monday afternoon, Hurricane Dorian is going to be slowly rambling off the coast of Florida, wreaking havoc up the entire East Coast all day Tuesday as it slowly moves into Wednesday. Here we are, Wednesday afternoon, Jacksonville, Savannah, the entire coast of Georgia, up through Carolina by Thursday. This baby is going nowhere fast. Here's your Thursday evening. North Carolina outer banks get crushed. Let's just pause it there. Let's bring it back to Friday morning off the outer banks and look at some of the wind speeds. So this is still a significant Cat 2 storm at this point. And just watch what the models do here. Slowly wreaking havoc on all the coastal towns in the eastern U.S. as it makes its way up, yes, you guessed it, to Canada, where it makes landfall in Nova Scotia. Now, is this unprecedented? Let's take a look. Yeah, this is a Cat 2 storm, Cat 2 hurricane, making landfall on Nova Scotia on Saturday, September 7th. That's what the current models are showing. We'll update them as they change. Now let's talk about the 1927 Nova Scotia hurricane. This is not rare. Here, in fact, is 1927 right here at the solar minimum between cycle 15 and 16. There was like a little spike up and down, and that's when the hurricane happened, the Nova Scotia came. Very similar to where we are now. High cosmic ray flux, <coughs> solar minimum, weak solar activity. 
And this is the Nova Scotia hurricane. Other hurricanes have happened here. And look at the track. It's exactly the same. It might even rafe Iceland. Heads up. Iceland, you may be getting a hurricane. That won't be for until mid-September. But we'll be watching that. And not only that, there is other historical Newfoundland earthquakes. Like in 1883. Isn't that date becoming very familiar? 1935. Galveston, the 1900 hurricane. It's interesting how these all correspond to minimums. There's the Galveston hurricane, 1900. 1883, right here, solar minimum, 11 and 12. <laughs> 1869, way back here. Solar minimum between cycle 9 and 10. Holy macaroni. All of these solar minimums have resulted in hurricanes in Nova Scotia. Go figure. We're about to repeat history in a cycle. And you're learning about it. Isn't that awesome? Climate is cyclic. Has nothing to do with you. It's not you. It's not man. It's the sun. Certainly not CO2. The northern lights will be visible as far south as Wisconsin and Michigan over the Labor Day weekend. And they may be visible tonight. You can see this huge... <clears throat> well, let's just walk it through. Let's take a look at the solar wind and I'll show you what happened. So this coronal hole, and we'll just run it through. Is it going to play? There it is. So this coronal hull needs to turn path earth, past earth-facing before it has any effect on you and I, which it has done. So it's now past earth-facing. Delicious. And what we would expect with that is it to couple with the sun, and it certainly has. Here's the coupling effect, and now we're up into geomagnetic instability. Let's just refresh this. It, it, this these numbers just came out. But what I want you to notice is the last one, two, three days. So the last coronal hole dropped off and the density increased. This is the coronal hole we're coupling with now here. The density increased and shortly thereafter, 24 hours later, the speed is increasing. Spiking up as high as 700 here, kilometers per second. If this goes any higher, we're going to be in geomagnetic storm. Not only that, the phi angle. Sun to Earth is hovering now at the 150, 180 zone, which is bad news for earthquakes. So we're in a very dangerous time. And for the next three days, this solar energy that is now coupling with the Earth and pouring energy through our northern poles and out through the southern poles, through the aurora, the Berkeley current, this plasma energy is going to result in intensification of this hurricane. So we're going to be watching this closely. If this geomagnetic storm or instability lasts, let's say, three or four days, it's anyone's guess what the manifestation in Dorian will be. And that's why we're here. We're here to bring you the news that no one wants to bring you. And the northern lights will be visible. And let's check out the current Aurora map. Holy macaroni. We have amazing Aurora in the Southern Hemisphere as well as the Northern Hemisphere. And it's just turning around. It's probably approaching the Great Lakes region. If you're up here in Central Canada, the skies are ablaze, probably. We're going to be watching this closely. <clears throat> Space weather may increase the intensity of Dorian. And it will certainly affect the path and pattern. And we're going to be watching it closely. Now the northern lights will be visible as far south as Wisconsin because of the coronal hole. Not because of you. Hidden earthquake risk found lurking beneath LA. 3.14 million people. They don't even know that all these quote unquote extinct fracture zones are actually not extinct. The faults once thought dead are now thought to be active. 
and recent research suggest that many of these quote unquote dormant faults are actually just waiting to go boom. Yes. And that's tonight's first boom. <laughs> and I just erased it. So Hurricane Dorian has a strength in the Cat 4 stat status. It is going to hook and go up the coast, most likely, 80% probability, and make landfall just a tippy touch in Daytona, and then again here in South Carolina and Charleston. That's what the current model suggests, the European model anyway, and that's what I'm going with. And hidden earthquake risks are now found beneath LA. As we enter this seismic warning period, 24 to 48 hours, and the West Coast is lighting up, the only active place on the globe. So let's cross our fingers. Let's light the cigar again. Holla! And let's get on with the news. <clears throat> Guys, we're about to get the shibaloosh. Now, I know a lot of people are got their panties in a bunch by my report on the 70,000-foot eruption that I only was reporting on a report that VOC, the Volcanic Ash and Advisory Centers, gave out on August 24th. Ironically, shortly thereafter, a huge cacophony of major eruptions in VEI 3-4 range have occurred. In fact, continuous volcanic ash has been observed the 29th through the 30th, starting at 34,000 feet and extending up to 35,000 feet for almost 14 hours. Do you know how much, how much atmospheric uh, emissions that is? And many people have been emailing me about a strange glow in the western skies after sunset that lasts for an extra hour. This is the volcanic aerosols that are being sprayed into the atmosphere and the stratosphere, refracting more light later than you've ever seen. It's a new paradigm, a new time, and it's not your fault. It's the Earth's fault, and it happens all the time in a cycle. Now, yachters close to a volcano eruption in Italy capture footage of lava spewing as they rush to safety. This is... Etna, where we predicted over a year ago that tourists would die, and they already have. So those predictions came true. But more tourists are looking to die today. Apparently, these sheep can't get enough. can't make this shit up. How stupid do you have to be to take a boat near Strum uh, Etna? Or Stromboli? Or any active volcano. Let's take a boat ride to Krakatoa. Hey, let's camp. Let's camp under the caldera, man. Bah. You know what? I bet you that there's like women and children on that boat. Total gullible schmucks that were uh, coerced into going on the. Oh, it's safe. It's safe. We know. We're smart uh, humans. We're sheeple. And we're going to drive right up into an active volcano. And, and what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly happen? Well, I have no idea what that is, but we don't want any. What could possibly go wrong? Boaters enjoying what was supposed to be a sunny day on the southern Sicilian coast in Italy. Holla! They were eating olives and probably pizza and pasta, and it was delicious. And there was some fat old lady with a mole there on the boat. Grandma. All right, a New Hampshire mom is fighting to keep her long-time oh, vanity license. Oh, shut up. License. We didn't ask you. Now, they were sailing a safe distance as per ordinance, but apparently, as I warned a year ago, the ordinance is nonsense. 
if there's any uptick in a magnitude of 100 times greater, the ordinance becomes deafenance. It becomes the death zone where your dumb ass took yourself by an active volcano. Anyone who dies near these active volcanoes deserves it. It's not like rock climbing where you can bring protection and gear. And as I climb and I'm scared to death, I put all this gear in so that if I fall, I don't die. And then I can climb higher. And then if I fall, I have more gear and I won't die if I fall. The object is not to fall. So when you're boating towards a volcano, there's no gear you can place into the water to prevent you from burning up if the volcano explodes onto your head. There's no gear you can put on your head. Even a hard hat will fuse onto your brain and the metal will singe to your flesh. Eruption updates, new from Stromboli. After the idiots boated too close and lived, Intense activity during the night. Very strong explosions and lava flows reached the sea. Yesterday evening activity at the volcano increased again significantly. Oh, here you can see on the thermals. Boom! It's like, holy sh Oh my God, my eyes are hurting. I should have taken my thermal images off. A very strong explosion occurred. Characteristic. Characterized as major. No one died. And it would be like major holy in major if that happened. This classification means that we'll probably won't let tourists go there for another week and then we'll let them go back in uh, to their demise. At some point, following the explosion, overall activity at the volcano will remain very high as well as Diamond and others because it is the folk festival here in Pagosa. And tomorrow's shattered day. <laughs> at 3.46 local time, another strong eruption occurred from the southwest vent. And that lava made it all the way to the ocean, baby. Yeah, that's like steam and lays and other shit. I don't even know what it's... I don't even know. Shivalouche, volcanic ash advisory, continuously observed in satellite imagery to 35,000 feet. That is 11,000 in meters. Drive that far tonight and tell me when you get there. Explosive activity continues. Volcanic ash advisory center... Anchorage warned about the volcanic ash bloom that rose an estimated 35,000 feet altitude of flight level. That's like driving to the mini mart here. Yeah, it's that far. Thank you, Chivalouche. Aviation color code orange. I wonder why there's been a major uptick in Chivalouche after they said that that 70,000 eruption didn't happen. It was just normal 23,000 foot activity. I wonder why it's been erupting at 35,000 feet continuously for days. I wonder. Residual volcanic ash still at 34,000 feet. As of this video. Good times. Blocking out the sun. Here we are at the Chivalouche live webcam. You can't see a fucking thing. But we will refresh it. And let's look at the log radiative power. Here's the thermal. Nothing spectacular. In fact, the overall activity since January of 2019, it's been dropping off. But I imagine we're back in an uptick phase here. You can see this big, fat, thick blue line. Yeah. I think something is about to happen over in this region. So keep your eyes on the prize. Past sea level rise? Question mark. Scientists find evidence several million years old. Yeah. Now listen, a group of scientists studying evidence preserved in a cave formation, namely a stalactite, found that global sea levels were as much as 52 feet higher than today, 3 million years ago. And they're using this to study the effects of catastrophic sea level rise on your ass. Because not only is it propaganda and fake, they are using this to scare the sh out of you. Three million years ago, it was 52 feet higher. And, and that's what we're saying. It's what we're saying. You're all about to drown. Based on science. Well, apparently the schmucks who wrote this article are not paleoclimatologists. And, and no, they didn't do any research into climate cycles or climate variability. Because if they think the last time sea level was 52 feet higher was 3 million years ago, then they, they didn't do their homework. 
because just 8,000 years ago, 6,000 and 4,000 years ago, sea level was 52 feet or higher than it is now, much higher. Some places up to 110 feet back here. Back at the climatic optimum 7,800 years ago, before present, sea levels were estimated to be up to 110 feet higher than now. Which means there may not have been any ice on the planet. Just a little bit. But it's anyone's guess. But the facts are that it was much getting warmer 8,000 years ago. Based on all data. There's no data that says it wasn't. If anyone could send me data that 8,000 years ago it was colder and it wasn't warmer and that 7,000 years ago it wasn't warmer and that 6,000 and 4,000 years ago it was not warmer than today, please send that. Because you cannot. Now let's talk about more of the propaganda, fraud, and lies coming from the mainstream. Specifically, Salon, who can suck it. Misogyny meet hypocrisy. Now, they must be talking about themselves because they didn't fact check anything in this article. It's a total article, and it's based on 100% propaganda and lies. And whoever wrote this should be ashamed of themselves. And Salon itself should be ashamed of themselves because they know that they're not at all have anything to do with um, journalism or journal. There's no etiquette here. There's no truthiness. It's bullshit. Amanda Marcotte is a fraud. She's a fraud. She hates Trump. Look, Trump is giving a, a gang signal that he's a white supremacist. Did you see it? Yeah, I just did it. Like I do Illuminati and like suck my... Anyway, according to this fraud, Amanda Marcotte, please email her at Amanda Marcotte on Twitter. Just tweet her and say, hey, Amanda, why don't you check some facts, you fraud? And let's read her shite because it's total shite. And please quote me on this. Amanda is full of shite. <coughs> Here it comes. And, and, and I can't even believe how these so-called journalists, they're basically paid fraud charlatans. They're paid propagandists. There are, there are almost no journalists today. Unless it's your first job in a local newspaper, you're a propagandist. And I guarantee this is why, because I know people in the industry, the editor says, this is your story. And you say, no, I want to do it on, uh, I want to do it on the new guy in the, the bagel shop or whatever. And they're like, no, you're doing it on man-made climate change. And you're going to make people scared or you're fired because they got the ultimatum from up above. And according to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who's the dumbest human on earth, Male, female, Puerto Rican, white, black, Asian, doesn't matter. She's just an idiot, a puppet that got selected for her puppetness. Oh, she's got Vanity Fair lipstick. She's hot. Oh, perfect. She's a, a minority. Oh, we need her in the Democrat Party. Because the Democratic Party, and I know I've worked for them for over a decade, they use poor people, black people, Puerto Ricans. They use the inner cities as mechanisms to get votes. They don't give a fuck about those people. While they set up their nonprofits and raise hundreds of thousands of fucking dollars in those poor cities, and they make the poor people pay membership. I used to work for them. It's embarrassing. You should be ashamed of yourself. Action United and any other nonprofit, left, right, middle, doesn't matter. All of your money is misappropriated for your fucking salary. I know I got free cell phone. I got thousand dollars of blah, blah, blah. And I had to leave because I felt sick because all the people around me are poor. And then I went out there and started planting food in their sick communities that have been made sick and sicker and poor and poorer by the Democrats in those inner cities, convincing these people that they're helping them.
They're helping them. You know how they're helping them? They're helping them by ta- making them pay for membership. And it- anyway, it's disgusting. And she's part of the fraud. Because she doesn't care about facts. She cares about money. If she doesn't fundraise her entire existence, she will not get reelected. And if she doesn't toe the lines of the people donating, they will not continue to donate. And when she spews shit out like Thurnberg's and Okasha Cortez's views on climate change align with those of better than 97% of climate scientists. So you're claiming... What's your name, Amanda? You're so insignificant, Marcote. Amanda Marcote, you're claiming that more than 97% of climate scientists agree that it's our fault that the earth is warming. If you don't understand how false that statement is, then Salon is part of the problem and so are you because they've been bought and paid for by the multinational corporations pushing this bullshit for a globalist agenda. Has nothing to do with science. Has nothing to do with helping you because you have to pay more fucking taxes while you're already poor. It has nothing to do with your neighbor or anything because carbon dioxide is plant food. Why aren't they taxing uh, actual toxic chemicals that come out of factories and chemical factories? How come they're not uh, taxing PCB and TCE and trichloroethylene? How come they're not taxing hydrocarbons that flow through pipes that pollute the earth? How come they're not taxing every fucking frack well that pays money every single gallon? How come? How come they're taxing cannabis and plant food? Oh my God! I'm about to lose my mind. Someone's trying to call me. So I had to hang up the phone and get rid of that. So while these pricks can, that are claim that they're... And she's a woman. Man, you should be ashamed of yourself, Amanda. Please come on the show so I can stick my foot up your ass. But you're such a coward. You would not even uh, debate any facts because you have none. You have no integrity and you did not fact check a good thing you said. You took a bulleted list of propaganda elements and you wrote an article said all Republican men think that these two women should be pregnant and retarded. And the, the fortunate thing is that this girl is probably autistic and retarded and this one probably also is too. And those are the facts. Here's some more facts about climate coming out today. Deep snow cover in the Arctic region intensifies heat waves in Eurasia. Not man. It's not CO2, it's snow, deep snow in the Arctic. Winter Northern Hemisphere snow extent has been increasing since the 1950s. The 1930s and 40s were the warmest time in the Northern Hemisphere. And NASA and NOAA have lied to you. They've changed the data over the last two decades, but they leave this up because apparently a warming earth that they've manipulated causes more snow. And we now know that more snow intensifies heat waves in Eurasia. How come not a single media source, even the Express? I mean, you figured they would want to stick their foot up the mainstream's arse. But the mainstream, even the, the, the rags, they all puppet the same shit. When this is the science, I bet you a million dollars that not a single mainstream media outlet picks up the fact that deep snow cover causes heat waves. It causes global warming, not you. Deep snow cover that has been increasing our entire lives and your parents' lives and your grandparents' lives since the Great Depression. The snow is causing the heat in the mid-latitudes. Not you. It's not global warming. And it's certainly not NASA or NOAA because they're frauds. Here's one of their fraudulent temperature adjustments. You see, no increase, increase heating. Let's take a look at this graph. Wow. By in 2012, whoa, it's really getting warm in 2015. Now here's the northern hemisphere. Oh, here's Texas. That's measured 
That's what NOAA claims. Here's the measured temperature in Texas since 1895 versus the fraud that's global warming. One's adjusted and one's raw. This one's real. This one's fake. Now let's look at some more fraud. Wow, there's Texas again. Here's the January, December numbers. Actual fraud. Actual fraud. Actual fraud. You can see where I'm going. Now let's took, take the entire global temperature data. Measured is in blue. Global temperature measured in blue. This is the new reported final data subset as adjusted and homogenized by the frauds at NASA and NOAA. Changing the temperature actually measured by 1.5 degrees in 1900 down and increasing it by a quarter of a degree now. Man, I love that science. Look how bad this graph looks. Measured in red, reported in blue. There's the 1.5 drop down. And there's the increase. See how the blue gets above it all of a sudden in 2010? All of a sudden, it's much warmer. And back then, it was much colder. Did you know how cold it was back then? You weren't alive, so it's not like you can even fact check me. But this is the fact. Red is real, showing global temperatures dropping since 1920. And blue is fake, NASA and NOAA's data. It's been adjusted and homogenized to defraud your ass. It's so fraudulent that I just happened to come over here today to the Greenland ice sheet. And I noticed an amazing thing happening as of the third week of August. Mass gain. After all of the first two weeks of August, the entire mainstream media was reporting on Greenland melting away into oblivion. Mass gain started early and in earnest, now gaining two gigatons of ice a day as of today. And it's silent over there in the global warming industry. Silent with those alarmists. Not a single mainstream source is going to report on the wonderful activity that Greenland has fixed. It's not melting anymore. It's gaining. It's over. The catastrophe has ended. Not a single person with integrity is going to report on that fact. No one. Listen. Is that, is that Mary Greeley channel? What, what is that? Ocean drilling revolutionized earth science. Global warming propaganda destroyed it. Now geologists want to get billions of more do dollars to plumb the depths, apparently to prove that we're all burning up. What a sad state of affairs. Whew. More West Nile virus cases being seen through the Southwest. Seven dead in Arizona. That means they're not alive from a mosquito. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's like, I thought I was going to get taken out by like a sniper or something. But a mosquito? Ebola kills nine-year-old girl as outbreak records 3,000 cases. Which means 30,000. If you've been following us. China's lunar rover has found something weird on the far side of the moon. Yes. Tracks. Someone's been driving up there. Holy shit. Well, actually, they stumbled on a surprise find during Lunar Day 8. The discovery prompted scientists on the mission to postpone other driving plans for the rover and instead focused its instruments on trying to figure out what the strange material was. Yes, it was cheese. Can you believe that? It's really fucking cheese. Attention city dwellers, we're interested in identifying university-owned or commercially managed underground urban tunnels or any other place that we can save our ass during the, grant, the event. When the magnetic reversal occurs, DARPA wants to know where they're going to stuff all your dumbasses.
<laughs> and they need this information by tonight. The ideal space will be human-made underground environment spanning several city blocks with complex layouts, multiple stories, including atriums, tunnels, and stairwells, where we can grow food and survive and thrive underground while we keep you all in good order with the 5G. But you will have internet and Soylent Green that you will suck out of a tube which emanates from the wall. Heads up, DARPA revealing themselves in plain sight. Do you know about Tolman's bolide hypothesis? If you don't, you should. And that's all I'm going to say about it. For those that actually want to understand what's happening, start here. This is Noah's flood. This is the Venus flybys. This is where many of the petroglyphs came from, the deluge, Armageddon. Start there. Now, Netflix's Dark Crystal prequel finds hope amid social collapse with puppets. Could this be foreshadowing from the powers that be that know what's happening? From the good entity that's revealing the facts in plain sight? Well, if you want to survive and thrive in the future, you need Tactical Medic. The Tactical Medic is a friend of the channel. Some of our subscribers work here, and they were able to talk to their boss, who's going to give us all 10% off. All weekend, Labor Day weekend, everyone gets it. But after that, if you use the coupon code capital S, capital E, 2019, you'll get 5% off all day. And this is where you get actual medical supplies, med kits that the professionals use. Yeah, we're talking about first responders. This is where the first responder kits are, childbirth kits, Chinook Medical Life Station, Basic Bleeding Control Group Trauma Kit, etc. If you're if you're going to step up your game, how about a lockpick card? Hello. This is the real deal here. TTM micro kits, rapid access first aid kits, scout advance packs. These are not Walmart shit. This is the best of the best. I wouldn't lead you anywhere else. TTM escrock school resource officers kit, warrior aid and litter kit. They're not going to around here. Public access bleeding control, eight pack vacuums. What's going on? I mean, I feel like I'm in an ambulance. Big shout out to Andrew who made this possible. The TTM Adventure Trauma Kit. Check it out. 175. You can get 1750 off this weekend. Has sutures and everything else you need to splint that compound fracture when your bone is sticking out of your Ah! Ah! I hate that. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Winter northern hemisphere snow has been increasing your entire lives. It was proven in an article that I'm sharing with you that this deep snow cover, increased snow cover, is intensifying heat waves in Europe and Eurasia. And Shivalouche will not stop puffing. Are you passing? I hope so. Thanks to all our one-time donors, which are far and few between. But our Patreons are trickling in. If you can get involved at $5 a month, you will totally make a difference to this channel. Small donations go a huge way in the long term. The more money we have, the more resources we gain, and the more information we share, the more trips we can take, the more time we can spend organizing LeakCon 2020. Announcements coming out soon. Are you listening? Are you preparing? Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. Do a dab.